Hello and welcome to the 48th video in this series programming a chess engine in JavaScript. Before I get started with this video, just a quick apology. There are going to be more knocking sounds from what seems to be the longest building project in the flat near to this one. Um, I've known in a long time and uh, either they're actually building something, but it could well be, judging by the time it's gone, that they're just... Uh, they're just knocking the walls for fun, but they've been doing it all day uh, and I haven't really had a chance to do the video without the noise in the background and now I've given up all hope of it, so I'm sorry if it disturbs. So on with the video. In this video we're going to implement the quiescent search. I've made some small changes between now and the last video in board.js, nothing major. I've simply removed the, I think at the end of, and I'm trying to remember where now, update list material, there was a print peaks list in there, I've taken that out because it's cluttering up the console and I think at the end of the pass FEN board as well there was a, a print square attacked as well that we'd used from the debugging when we did the square attack function a long time ago, I've removed that as well from the uh, code so that we don't see that every time we refresh the console in the browser. So like I said, onto the quiescent search in this uh, in this video because we talked last time about alpha beta we saw the program actually search a line and it produced a fairly strange line because of the horizon effect so to get around that we have to implement something called the quiescent search and to do that or what we do is we basically do a search very similar to alpha beta but we search only captures so what i've done in preparation for this video to speed things up slightly i've added already an extra function called generate captures into movegen.js. Now if you're sort of writing this as the videos go, it's literally a very very bad piece of coding practice and that was to take the generate all moves or generate moves, copy and paste it, change the name and I simply went down and removed all of the parts in generate moves that don't generate captures. So if we just quickly go up to the generate moves function here. So for example, for the white pawns here, I simply deleted this section off because it's the quiet moves, deleted the castling off, did the same for the black pawns and the black castling, and then inside the non-slide and slide loops, I simply removed these add quiet move sections out so that we ended up with a function that just generates capturing moves. Right, so back to the implementation of the quiescent search. So how does this work? Well, it needs a name and we're going to call it uh, qui quiescence, if we can spell it. And we take in our alpha and our beta bounds, as we exactly as we do in alpha beta. And in fact, we're going to just put in exactly the same code as we have for alpha beta right at the start here. I'm just going to take the search controller, the nodes increase, and the max depth check and drop them into QSearch like this. Oh, and another thing I've moved from the last video is take care to move this search controller increment of the nodes back down below the checkup line here because we'll be returning the quiescence here. We'll change that in a bit. Okay, so that's the first part done, exactly the same as alpha beta. And now it gets a little bit more interesting in the quiescent search because what we can do now is remember we're just trying to find a quiet position where we can get a reasonable evaluation for the current position so that we're not to make, you know so ensuring we're not leaving a piece hanging or something like that which is what the problem was with the horizon effect so what we'll do is now we'll get our score for the position just as we've been returning from alpha beta until now but what we can do is, we know that we're only going to check captures, so we can already do something called standing pat, and basically that says, if we decide not to do anything, so we say, okay, the, the last person to move to come into quiescent search was our opponent, so they could have captured our queen or something like this, but let's take the static score from our point of view, and if that score, even before we've made any return capture or anything, is still above beta, then we can safely return beta in the knowledge we're going to beat beta anyway. So this is known as stunning pat, choosing not to do anything. We'll just not make any captures on the board, thank you very much, and we'll return beta. Likewise, you can add a small refinement then to alpha, and you can say that if the score is greater than alpha, then let's also increase our alpha at least to the level of the score we have without making any recaptures or anything. So we can say that alpha equals score. 
So the critical part here really is here where we can choose to effectively do nothing and just return beta because if our score evaluated in the static position now is already above beta then we really don't need to carry on looking at various captures. And there are other refinements you can do later on in the engine with this. For example, you can say, okay, if I'm more than, a, let's say, the value of a rook over beta and I don't have any rooks left to be captured, then I can probably return beta her here already, for example, because there's no way the opponent is going to win on a recapture enough material back to go underneath beta. Anyway, so... Now the next phase to do is actually almost identical to the alpha beta function. So I'm going to do something a bit naughty here and just copy in the code right from the generate moves all the way down to the end of the move loop here. And then we'll be taking some stuff out. So doing it this way just keeps things a little bit quicker and it's not very complicated. The, the, the main take home from the quest and search was this standing pat here. And the first thing we need to do is change the generate moves to generate captures. And now we loop through all of our moves, just as we've done in alpha beta. We get our move. We see if it's a legal move. But now we just carry on searching quiescence. We don't call alpha beta again. We call quiescence because we're only interested in captures. Take the move back. We have our check for whether the search has stopped. And now we have our alpha and beta cutoffs as normal, except we're not going to do anything with the killer moves here, and we're not going to do anything with the history heuristic here. So I'll take those placeholders out. And that's the end of the move loop. Now, when we finish the move loop, we don't have a mate check in here. The reason I have legal here is just so that we can keep our move ordering stats up, because they're important when you start looking at the, the move ordering. But in turn, because we're only making captures, there could be other moves in the position. So we don't have any sensible mate check or stalemate check we can do here. Remember, we're just resolving captures. But assuming all of that has worked out OK, then we can drop back down to alpha beta to quickly copy some code again. Like I said, it's very similar. And just drop in now the storing of the PV move for our best, best move or just returning alpha. And that's all there is to it. The only thing we need to do more for the quiescent search is simply to, instead of return the evaluation, to actually return the value of the quiescent search with alpha and beta. And the effect of this, all of this is, is that it improves then greatly the quality of the line that the engine finds, which we'll have a look at in the browser now. So what I'm just going to do is off screen as usual at the moment. I'm just going to refresh and make sure that everything searches OK. And it does. So I'm going to refresh again and bring across the browser here. So you can see that we've got the board here and we're ready to go. And I'm just going to click set position. And now it's searching the start position again. And you can see now it's taken more nodes, 217,000 to depth 5. But now we have a much more balanced looking score situation, which we'd expect. White depending on odd or even moves, it's either a draw or advantage white, obviously, because certainly for the first few views of the game, black can equalize by playing symmetrical moves virtually. And indeed, the engine has found the best line, pawn e4, pawn e5, pawn d4, pawn d5, and then bishop to e3, giving the score of plus 25. So there's no crazy queen capturing pawn or very strange looking moves here. They're all moves which are completely dominated, of course, by the p-square tables and the evaluation. Both sides moving straight away their central pawns to the optimum squares, and then the next move is the next best, which is developing a piece. In this case, it's developed the bishop. Good, so that's the quiescent search actually running. So the question is, what do we actually have to do now? Because the engine is actually searching um, and will already play some sort of game of chess. However, it's extraordinarily restricted by the lack of move ordering. And in fact, if I just bring the browser back, the 217,000 nodes here, when we implement uh, the move ordering scheme, which will be very basic, just with the killers, the history, captures, and the PV move, but that will actually reduce to the same depth and the same position the nodes by over a factor of 10. 
So you can already appreciate how much move ordering is important inside the alpha beta. And in the next video, what we're going to do is we're actually going to start setting up and implementing the move ordering. And we'll then be using these fail, uh, fail high and fail high first stats as we implement each one incrementally, just to give you an idea of what kind of influence they have over the search abilities of the engine or search efficiency of the engine. So that's it for this one. Thanks very much for listening. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.